Thanks for joining me. This is episode two of the story of New Mapleton. Now in this one, I'm just going to narrate the story. Uh, I'm recording this after having built in New Mapleton and some mistakes were made. But rather than just start over and build a new city, I thought this, this actually makes for a good story of a real town that things really happened in um, that are very believable. So the story actually starts out with uh, one of our city board members, Gerald, has actually asked that we build a new medical center, even though there's already a medical center in the town. We build it right next to the new fire station, so everybody's happy about that. But what people don't know is that Gerald's been getting kickbacks from a certain pharmaceutical agency. He's a doctor in in the town, Uh, recently moved, joined the board, but the town ended up using money that would have otherwise been allocated for a police department. But since it's a small town, crime isn't really an issue yet, so nobody's really noticed. So the board is also instituting some new policies sure everybody's got water and electric meters to uh, go along with our goals of sustainability but something has gone horribly wrong and there were some vandals that knocked out power to our sewage station which backed up the sewage system and made everybody really sick fortunately we had the extra medical center so that, that was nice board quickly got that sorted out but even still it was a big big scandal in the news for a while about these vandals nobody knew who they were um, whether it was just a one-off or if it was something that they could expect to happen again so it wasn't really a good move for this new board that had just been instated in New Mableton but nonetheless the town continued to grow a little bit of debt city, but that's not unheard of for a growing town. So business continues. People started moving in, and everything seemed to be going okay. Until the great sewage scandal reared its ugly head. Now, we've already had one sewage scandal, but this time, this sewage scandal was the result of the board hired a contractor that failed to connect power correctly to the sewage system when they installed the new power system. And so when people heard about this, when the town released the information that this was caused by the contractor that the board had hired, people began to really lose faith in this new board. Elections were going to be coming up, so so this was this was bad news for the people on the board. You know, any more scandals, and and it was probably going to be time to completely clean house. And the board, recognizing that the budget was in the red, decided to reorganize some funds and realize that well, we're spending a lot of money on power, and we have extra power that we just installed. Maybe we should reduce that. So they did. And unfortunately, this caused immediate blackouts in the whole city. So this, of course, was the straw that broke the camel's back. And when elections rolled around, which they did shortly, the entire board was voted out. And a brand new board was voted in. First thing they did, of course, was get the power under control. And they could see crime was starting to happen around the city, so they converted that medical center right into a police department. Now, this new board was headed by none other than the very the town's very own Earl Dixon. Now, Earl Dixon was one of the early adopters in New Mableton. He actually brought in a good portion of the goods industries that brought jobs into New pa- Na- that brought jobs into New Mapleton. And uh, with his patronage, the town has really, really begun to grow. Now, 
New Mapleton has over a, a thousand inhabitants and they're already thinking about growth because they know they've got a great location, beautiful weather, beautiful scenery, and lots of resources. Now the new board was really only interested in one thing in the city. They wanted to make sure it was growing, all the services were properly funded, but without exceeding their budgets. They succeeded in balancing the budget, so it was actually a little bit of a surplus. They managed to grow the city with added residential areas, added industrial zones, more places for small businesses to set up. Now while New Mapleton grows, one of the things that's really important to all of the members of the, the town is to preserve those beautiful maple trees right along the river. It's just, it's just such a beautiful place, it's full of nature, uh, it's quiet, it's peaceful, it's just a great place to go and, and spend time. So no matter what happens in this, this city, they're going to try and preserve that. It's, it's almost like a, a monument or a, uh, a natural wonder. Now, Erlis shifted his focus in the town, you know, from running his industries now to, to an acting member on the board, really focusing on what it is that the people want. And so he's, he's very interested in making sure that, that people are, people's voices are heard because he has big plans for the future. And if he's going to have any chance at having those big plans come, he needs to have the people on his side, and also all of the other board members on his side. So for starters, he's gonna start building some, some green spaces and some, some playgrounds and parks in the town. This is what people really want. Right now, it's, they have this beautiful nature along the, the river, but not really any great places for kids or, or for people just to gather and, and have picnics and things like that. So they're, they're gonna build a nice little playground and they found a beautiful location for it up in the original area, not too far from the medical center, uh, just in a small neighborhood. And there's there's this green space between houses that the city still owns and they, they just wanna build a nice little park for walking or walking your dog or, or just a, a quiet place to sit and read a book. And they've got this beautiful 
this wonderful designer who lives in the town is actually a school teacher who, who just loves to design green spaces. And so they, they employ this teacher every time they can get the chance. And they always like to make really creative paths and, and add lots of trees and benches. Now that the town is growing, uh, the board has decided it's time to start labeling the districts. So they've got the main district of New Mableton, and then they've got their industrial quarter, which they know will grow in the future. Now, Maple Grove right now is just this quiet neighborhood. But they do have this, this waterfront property that they want to use at least a little bit. So Earl has managed to convince uh, a few of the board members and, and the public that, that this is, while it's a beautiful place to preserve, we should still use it a bit. Uh, and they've got a developer to build just a little bit of property along the waterfront there, maybe some restaurants, um, and eventually a, a larger park in the area, or, or some other city-based amenities. So they're really thinking ahead about how to use this, this waterfront, because they know in, in the long term it's going to be very, very valuable property. Now that things are well in order with the board and with the town, people are happy, we're growing, Earl is starting to plan for his new vision, which is to shift from the goods industry, which is unfortunately a very dirty industry, uh, and shift over to something much more sustainable. So Earl wants to build a, a, just a large organic farming industry in the city. There's fertile land right nearby, um, and plenty of land available. And he thinks this is, this is the future, this is the way to go. We need to be thinking about sustainable, organic agriculture. So he buys a little bit of land right near the edge of the city uh, of the current. He buys a little bit of land right near the edge of the city's current plot, knowing that they're going to expand in the near future, especially if he can convince them, uh, and starts the Riverside Farm.
Now, while Earl was one of the early uh, adopters of the industrial sector of New Mapleton, he wasn't the only one. There was also the Noir family who built a number of industries and was very profitable. They did business with Earl Dixon uh, and actually opened a lot of businesses, but they have a vision for New Mapleton as well. It's a little different. Their vision is to expand to the other side of the river where they know they have easy access to the rail networks that connect to nearby cities. And they believe that if they can expand to that, then they can build a, a, a commercial empire making lots and lots of money in New Mapleton, shipping goods in and out. As New Mapleton grows, they'll be the big provider of imported goods. And so they've managed to, to convince Earl that if Earl wants to get his, see his vision realized of building his organic farms, they also want some help seeing their vision realized of, of this import-export business. So, uh, Earl Dixon agrees to bring power across the river and the Noir family starts setting up their industry. Now this is headed up by Jocelyn Noir. Jocelyn is a, a young entrepreneur. She's, she's very headstrong, very outspoken. Um, she's likable in the community um, and very, very ambitious. So her, her industries just start taking off right away and she's already building roads to connect to the rail line. As soon as the city gets just a little bit bigger and has a little more money to, to make the business worthwhile. But she's really thinking ahead. And the, this competition between the Dixons and the Noirs really does help the city grow. So with that growth, Earl now has convinced the board. Uh, Jocelyn Noir is happy, so he's got her vote. And he manages to purchase some additional land to build his, his organic farms the way he envisions them. Now he doesn't start small, he starts big right away. Now, part of his big vision isn't just about building organic farms, it's ultimately about growing New Mapleton. So he can see ahead and think ahead that there's, there's a lot of needs that this town has, and one of those needs is a high school. If they're really gonna grow, they're gonna need to have a high school and eventually university so they can really educate their city and be prepared for, for importing even larger businesses and commercial endeavors. So they build Mapleton High. It's a beautiful new building, very large. They're ready with capacity for, for, for many years in the city.
Now, despite Earl's vision, he's already running into problems. His new farm is a bit farther from the town. Uh, it's a long drive for workers. Now, he does have access to another highway, so he thinks, oh, well, maybe if I connect my farms to this other extension of highway, I can get other uh, workers from other towns, other areas to come in and work here. Now connecting to the outside is, isn't going to be enough. Earl knows that he's gonna need housing for his workers nearby the farm. So he's, he's going to build a brand new neighborhood called Riverside Meadows. It'll be right nearby the organic farm. So it can be a green community with lots of walkable spaces, parks, and connectivity to the outside. Now, initially, everybody's on board with this idea. It sounds just beautiful. He paints a beautiful picture of this wonderful neighborhood, of this organic uh, food that will be local and fresh, no pollution, and everybody buys into it wholeheartedly. They think this is, you know, this is the next big thing. New Mapleton is just gonna thrive on this new neighborhood, on this new industry. and people start moving in right away, but something just doesn't seem right. Now, like all visionary projects, Earl Dixon's idea is gonna cost a lot of money. So because everybody's bought into it, though, he's managed to convince the board to raise taxes in New Mapleton so that they can use the money to help pay for this new development, believing that the growth will be so rapid they won't have any trouble paying back uh, any loans that they take. The citizens, on the other hand, are not so happy about this, especially the local businesses. The taxes are just too high. Uh, businesses start to go under, they can't afford their rents, um, and, and they start to move out. Uh, and people really start to complain. There's actually some protests happening, lots of letters written to the board. While Earl Dixon's vision is great, he, he's made some enemies. Now the town is growing, 
And in order to keep up with that growth, the board needs to add more power. Uh, but uh, once again, they're not making as much money as they'd like to be, so they, they take out a loan. And, and Earl just barely gets enough votes to, to get that to happen. But he keeps growing his neighborhood, uh, Riverside Meadows. And he gets a new wind turbine put in. And he uh, manages to even squeeze out a little more tax money from the residents. Then he starts to notice that crime is a problem and he still doesn't have the workers he needs. And people are just not very happy with how things are going. So Earl decides he needs some good PR. So he personally decides to, to uh, donate a Japanese garden to the city. They find a nice place near his industry near a new neighborhood in Industrial Heights. And they build this Japanese garden and, and people really, really enjoy it. At least the people who live nearby. And this has the effect of, of winning him some favor. You know, he's, even though he's not perfect, even though uh, the city isn't growing quite to the vision that he'd hoped, at least not yet, People get the sense, though, that he is very community-minded. Now, he'd like to uh, purchase some space for to expand the police, because he does keep hearing reports of crime, especially out in his new community, and that's really affecting the growth there. So he's, in the meantime, trying to think of ways to really kind of boost morale in the meantime while they raise some funds for a police station. Now one of the other things that is also very much a need in this area is a cemetery. The town's been around for a number of years and people really feel connected to the area. And nothing really says connected to the area like being able to bury your, your loved ones in that area. So, so Earl and the board, with their limited funds right now, they're really battling for, really have to make some tough decisions. So they're hoping the town will keep growing so they can increase the funds and pay for both the police station and a cemetery. They look around for a, a plot for the cemetery and manage to find just the right one near the highway. Now, unfortunately, this means that crime has gotten gotten pretty bad. There's a lot of reports and the police just can't keep up. So in Maple Grove, things are going pretty well. The police are centered there. But outside of that area, especially over in Riverside Meadows, they just can't keep up. So again, Earl, worried about the public relations aspect of this, decides to build a park. So there's this nice little triangular plot of land where he thinks, well, this would be a beautiful place for a little park and we can expand it over the years. Why don't we start out with just a little uh, gazebo? Maybe eventually we can put in a bandstand make this just a beautiful, beautiful place for people to come and they'll drive by it on their way into the town or into the organic farms. Now the Smiths live right across from this new park and they're not very happy because they keep complaining to the city board that they've been robbed not once but twice. And I think putting in this park will make things worse because there'll be loiterers. But Earl doesn't really care. He just wants to build a beautiful park with beautiful spaces. So he goes about and does that.
So what's next for New Mapleton? There's still some problems. Needs an increased police station presence, maybe some more uh, child health care and some elder care. Uh, certainly needs some more parks, more places for, for people to find leisure time before it can really start to grow a bit more. It's been teetering around a population of about 3,000 for a number of months now. Not much growth. So the board is talking about plans for more leisure spaces, maybe a basketball court by the high school, places for people to get together and just enjoy themselves. Now Earl is still pushing for his vision, but he's got to get Got to get some things in order first. The budget is, is, is a bit volatile. Sometimes they're making money, sometimes they're losing money. Uh, and this has to do with people kind of moving in and out. They need to get the taxes in order so that they're not too heavy. But I think ultimately New Mapleton is, is just like any small town anywhere in the world, just trying to solve what they can and compete with the, the neighboring towns that may have cheaper houses or nicer houses, uh, may have more jobs, or may just may just have more people. But we're on a path, and we're on a journey, and we'll make it. So I hope you will join us next time for episode three of New Mapleton, where we'll see where Earl Dixon and and Jocelyn Noir can help the city grow next. <laughs>